we're going to be looking at a complete factoring review of quadratics. This will cover decomposition, charting, difference of squares, factoring using product sum and GCF. So let's take a look here at our first question. All right, so if you look at the first question here, if you're looking at this here, you're going to say, okay, well, I've got a simple trinomial. Notice the leading coefficient is 1. So I have here a simple trinomial. Uh, when you have a simple trinomial, it's product sum. So my product is negative 72 and my sum is 1. I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 72 and add to be 1. Um, and those numbers are going to be negative 9 and 8. Right? Negative 9 times 8 is negative 72 and negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. So this will factor into m minus 9, m plus 8. Now again, as we go through the questions, I encourage you to pause the video, try the question out yourself, and then see my solution. So work along with me as we go through these here. So same idea with this one here. Leading coefficient is 1. This is another simple trinomial, so it's a standard product sum approach. My product is 30, and my sum here is 11. Two numbers that multiply to be 30 and add to be 11 are 6 and 5. So this will factor into k plus 6, k plus 5. All right, continuing again, obviously another simple trinomial here. So my product is 50. My sum is negative 15. Don't forget to take the sign in front. A lot of times people do forget that. Two numbers that multiply to be 50 and add to be negative 15 are negative 10 and negative 5. So this will factor into m minus 10 and m minus 5. And again, just as a reminder, order doesn't matter. I could have rewritten this as m minus 5 and m minus 10. Multiplication is commutative. Okay. Now, with these questions here, it appears as if I do not have a simple trinomial. But whenever you factor, you should look to see um, whether there's a GCF on this. And this actually has a GCF of 2. Leave me with an x squared plus 4x plus 3. And now what happens is now inside the brackets, I'm left with a simple trinomial. So I just need to think of two numbers that multiply to be 3 and add to be 4. And those two numbers are 3 and 1. So therefore, this is going to factor into 2, x plus 3 times x plus 1. Likewise, for the next question here, right, you always want to look to see whether there's a GCF. Well, I have a GCF here. My GCF here is 3. So I can factor out a 3, and I'm left with m squared plus 6m plus 8. Now I have myself a simple trinomial inside, so I need to think of two numbers whose product is 8 and whose sum is 6. Well, the two numbers who, that multiply to be 8 and add to be 6 are 4 and 2. So this will factor into 3m plus 4, 3 times m plus 4 times m plus 2. And now we're fully factored. Okay, likewise with question 6, GCF for 6 is 4, in which case we're left with x squared plus x minus 12. Right, and now what I need to do is I need to think of two numbers. I'll write it up here, whose product is negative 12 and whose sum is 1. Well, the two numbers that multiply to be negative 12 and add to be 1 are going to be negative, or sorry, going to be 4 and negative 3. So this is going to factor into 4 times x plus 4 times x minus 3. Okay, so notice the difference between these two types of problems that we've taken a look at. These are simple trinomials where there's no GCF involved. It's just a straight up simple trinomial doing product sum. Whereas these are still, you still approach it using a simple trinomial, but there's a GCF that occurs in each one that you have to, have to take out first, and then you're left with a simple trinomial. Okay, now take a look at this next quadratic, all right? Um, if you notice here with this quadratic here, there's no GCF on this. I can't factor that 3 out. It's not common uh, multiple in all three of the coefficients. Can't factor it out. So I can either factor this using charting or decomposition. Let's go ahead and do it using decomposition. So using decomposition, my product here would be 3 times 6, which is 18, and my sum here would be negative 11. So I need to think of two numbers that multiply to become 18 and add to become 11. Well, if you take a look here, those two numbers are going to be negative 9 and negative 2. So using decomposition, 
what I would do here is this would be 3n squared. I'm going to get rid of the negative 11n and change it to negative 9n minus 2n plus 6. And then you go ahead and do factor by grouping, right, on each of these two terms. Group these together like this. You do factor by grouping. Well, if I'm doing factor by grouping here, I'm going to factor out a 3n, leaving me with n minus 3. Here, like I had mentioned before, always factor out minus signs in addition to the numbers. So I'm going to factor out a minus 2, leaving me with an n minus 3. So now what we have is we have a common factor of n minus 3 in both. So I'm going to take that out of the expression, leaving me with a 3n minus 2. Okay? And again, order doesn't matter here. All right, continuing on here, um, once again, I leading coefficient is not 1, but I cannot factor this 8 out of the entire expression. So now I have to approach this using decomposition or charting. Let's solve this one using charting. So if I want to solve this using charting, you write down all the factors of 8 and their flips. And then you write down all the factors of negative 3. Now, again, if you missed uh, my lesson on charting, I can link that in the top right-hand corner if you want to see what charting is, how to do it. Um, same with decomposition. Those, those videos are available for you. So now I'm looking to find combinations such that the product of the diagonals, when I add them up, I get 2 here. So as I run through these combinations, you're going to find that <clears throat> this column and this column work. Because notice what happens here. If you take a look here, 2 times 3 is 6, and 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. When I add 6 and negative 4, you get 2. So therefore, this is going to factor into, we read this from left to right, so it's going to be 2r minus 1, 4r plus 3. And that will be factoring using charting. Okay, moving on to number 9 here. Take a look, same idea. I can't factor that 2 out. So we can do a decomposition or charting. I'll use decomposition this time. So my product here is going to be 2 times negative 21 is negative 42. And my sum here is going to be negative 1. So I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 42 and add to be negative 1. That's going to be negative 7 and 6. So therefore, I can, I can replace that negative m with a negative 7m plus 6m minus 21. And now I can GCF out an M out of the first two terms. Uh, likewise, with the next two terms, I can GCF out a 3, leave me with 2M minus 7. And you'll notice once again, which is a common next step with decomposition, is you have that common term in both. So I can factor that out of the expression, and now I'm left with an M plus 3. And now we are fully factored. All right, let's take a look at number 10. So for number 10 here, same idea. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this one using charting. So if I'm going to solve this using charting, you get 3 and 1, 1 and 3. Factors of 4 are 4 and 1, 2 and 2. And I'm looking for combinations that come out to be 13. We can find that right away. Uh, you'll take a look here. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 3 is 12. And these add to be 13. So this will factor into x plus 4 times 3x plus 1. Okay, uh, let's do the next one using decomposition. So my product here is going to be negative 30, and my sum here is going to be negative 1. I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be 30 and add to be negative 1. That's going to be negative 6 and 5. So this would be 10x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 3. GCF out what you can. In this case, I can GCF out of 2x. I'm left with 5x minus 3. Here I can't GCF out anything, so I'm just going to put a plus 1 there. And now again, we have that common term of 5x minus 3 in both, in which case this will factor into 2x plus 1 times 5x minus 3. All right, moving on here. Um, we can factor this however we like. Let's go ahead and do decomposition again. Uh, if I'm going to do decomposition on this, my product here is 15 times negative 2 is negative 30, and my sum here is negative 7. So I need to think of two numbers that multiply to become negative 30 and add to become negative 7. Well, those two numbers are going to be what? Negative 10 and 3. So now 
I can go ahead and get rid of that minus 7g and replace it with a negative 10g plus 3g minus 2. And then I can factor by grouping here. So I can GCF out the first two terms, uh, giving me a 5g, leave me with a 3g minus 2. And then likewise, just like the last example, I can only factor out a 1. And now I'm left with 5g plus 1 times 3g minus 2. And now we have our quadratic fully factored. Okay, so uh, in these, these six questions here, we have the ideas of you can factor using decomposition, as I've done uh, for these examples here, or you have the method of charting, which is also available to you. Both methods work for every one of these questions. Take a look here at number 13. I don't want to do this using decomposition. If I use decomposition, I have 32 times 3 is going to be 96, and the numbers are getting too big for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do charting on this question. So if you're going ahead and going through charting here, you'd write down all the factors of 32 and their flips. Now, there is a lot of them. Uh, what, 4 and 8, 8 and 4. So you've got a lot here to go through. Now, we're kind of in luck, though, because the constant term is only 3, and 3 is prime. You just have 3 and 1. Now, again, as we've talked about in previous videos, this is a minus sign here, so the only way to make the product work is if I put minus signs on those. So now I need to think of a combination that's going to come out to be a negative 20. Um, and you can find that pretty quick. I already see it right here. Uh, if you take a look, 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. This adds to be negative 20. So this factors into 8x minus 3 and 4x minus 1. So this would be a prime example of where factor by using charting is a lot easier than using decomposition. Okay, let's take a look at number 14 here. If you look at number 14, um, I, again, I want to do this using charting. I don't want to have to multiply 21 and 30 together. Uh, charting will still be a bit of work here, especially because of the factors of 30. There's a lot of them. Um, but I still think it'll be an easier question uh, than doing decomposition. So let's go ahead and try this using charting. So 21 and 1, 1 and 21, 3 and 7, 7 and 3. And then the factors of 30 here, let's go ahead and write down all the factors of 30. So I've got negative 30. So negative 30 and 1, negative 1 and 30, negative 2 and 15, negative 15 and 2, negative 3 and 10, negative 10 and 3, and lastly, negative 6 and 5, negative 5 and 6. Okay, so now pause the video if you want. Try to find this combination. It'll take a little bit of time. Uh, we need the product of the diagonals when you sum them up to get 70. If you went ahead and did that, you should have found this column here with this one here. Notice here when I do this, we end up getting uh, 7 times 5 is 35, and then 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. Add them together and you get your 17. Uh, once you have that, you're done. This factors into 7x minus 6 times 3x plus 5. Okay, so uh, these last eight questions have all been using decomposition and charting. You know, review them. They're a thorough review of uh, factoring with a coefficient that is not equal to 1. Okay, moving on here. Uh, now moving on to difference of squares here. And again, the deal with difference of squares is you've got to express this as a power of 2. Power of 2, right? So now I have an expression to the power of 2 minus another expression to the power of 2. So that's going to factor into 5p minus 9 and 5p plus 9. Likewise here, I have to represent 36 as a power of 2. That'll be 6 squared. This x, this is not expressed as a power of 2 yet, right? The base of x is expressed as a power of 2, but the 121 is not. So I have to rewrite this as 11x quantity squared. Now that I have this as a power of 2, we can go ahead and apply our difference of squares formula. Okay, continuing on here, same idea. This be 1 squared minus 5q quantity squared. Now I have these expressed as powers of 2, so you can go ahead and do your difference of squares formula. For number 18 here, um, you always want to look to see whether you can simplify. So looking at this here, I can divide across by 5, uh, in which case here, if you take 80 and divide across by 5, you're going to get 16t squared. 
And if I take 405 and divide it across by 5, I'm going to get 81. Now notice here, now that I've done a GCF, I have a difference of squares. And I can go ahead and factor this. I have to express these as powers of 2. So this would be 4t quantity squared minus 9 squared. In which the case this becomes 5 times 4t minus 9 times 4t plus 9. All right, moving on to the last two questions here. These are already expressed as powers of 2. So when I do this here, this is going to be x plus 2 minus x plus 7 times x plus 2 plus x plus 7. Now keep in mind here, this is my x and this is my y. When you use your difference of squares formula, it's really box squared minus triangle squared is going to equal box minus triangle times box plus triangle. Right, the x and y are just placeholders. They can be anything, and the x can even be an x plus 2, and the y can be an x plus 7. So now that you've done that here, I can go ahead and I can drop the brackets on the x plus 2. I can distribute the minus sign on the other one. Likewise, I can drop the brackets, drop the brackets, and I end up getting here. The x's will cancel. I end up getting negative 5 for the first term, and then 2x plus 9 for the last term. Okay, uh, finishing us off here with this very last question here. Again, box squared minus triangle squared. So this will end up being x minus y times x plus y. And now what happens here is that minus sign can be distributed in, in which case I get 2a plus 3 minus 2a plus 3 times 2a plus 3 plus 2a minus 3. And now you'll see here, the in the first, in the first equation that we have, the 2a's will cancel, and I'm left with, and I'm left with a 6. In the second equation, the 3's will cancel, and I'm left with a 4a. This whole thing reduces to become a 24a. All right, that concludes our factoring review here. Again, we've got difference of squares, difference of squares with GCF. We have complex trinomials using charting, complex trinomials using decomposition. We have simple trinomials with GCF and simple trinomials without GCF. Thank you.